Good afternoon, everyone. The day has finally come. It is time to take fish from the quarantine tank and put it back in the main display. <laughs> this is the younger Sonoran Reef. Um, he's the one that did the video on red slime algae. And as you can tell, he's taller than me now, so I call him the younger, not the uh, shorter. So anyway, today's, today's the day. Let's get some fish back into this tank. So how we're going to do this is, we are going to slowly drain the water out of the quarantine tank into a trash can. We're then going to fill the quarantine tank with water from the main display. The reason that we're doing this is it's going to be the least traumatizing to the fish. We don't have to put them in a separate container. This morning we did water tests on both aquariums to make sure that their temperature, salinity, alkalinity, calcium levels, phosphate, nitrate, everything was pretty much identical between the two systems. So this should be relatively stress-free on the fish. So we're going to speed things up right now. But what you'll see is us draining this aquarium, us then pulling water from this aquarium, and then filling this aquarium again with newly mixed salt water that we have in the container right here. So, without any further uh, interruptions or distractions, let's get this started. So, we've done the water change. Logan, my son, ran upstairs to use the rest of the salt water to do a water change on his tank. It has left me to transfer the fish. Now, in theory, this should be pretty easy. I just need to catch the fish from here and transport them a couple feet and let them go here. Now, I'm not going to catch all of the fish. There are a couple fish I'm leaving here that are going to get new homes, and I'll go into that in a little while. But for now, let's get the four fish that I am keeping into the new aquarium. Or their old aquarium, or a cover. purple tang, the flame angel, the coral beauty, and the lawnmower blenny all back in the main display tank. And still in the quarantine tank, we have the long nose hawkfish and the pair of flame clowns. And I'll kind of go over what's going on with those guys here in a couple minutes. It's the next morning and all of the fish are doing fantastic. They've all taken to their old home quite well and we are 
ready to finish what we were going to do with our quarantine tank, which is find new homes for the rest of the fish and um, go ahead and clean it up and get it ready for some new arrivals. So what are we going to do with the fish that are still in the tank? Well, um, I posted on Facebook looking for a new home for my flame clowns. Um, they mean a lot to me. I got the at two different times. I got the male first and then the female. And they fought and bickered. And I had to separate them about three times before they finally uh, paired up. And then about six months later, they started laying eggs. And I cared enough about these fish where I wanted to know that they were going somewhere where they would be cared for and um, just trading them in at the local fish store wasn't what I wanted to do with them. So anyway, I posted an ad on Facebook saying that I was looking to sell them as a mated pair. And a clownfish breeder who lives here in Arizona actually contacted me, asked me some information, where I got them, how long I've had them, wanted some more information about them because um, he didn't know that much about them. And after conversing and going over the whole uh, whole story, um, he decided that he would like to take them. And in trade, I could pick any two of his 25,000 clownfish at his um, breeding facility. So <laughs> I couldn't pass up an offer like that. So um, they're gonna be the two new fish going into the quarantine tank. Now, that won't be today, but um, they are going to come by here in about an hour and uh, take a first-hand look at them, make sure that they're what he wants, that I totally understand, and um, then they will be off to their new home. And so the last fish that I have in the quarantine tank is going to be the long-nosed hawkfish. And um, he's not going back in the main display because right before the marine velvet outbreak, um, I saw him with a whole pistol, no, not a pistol shrimp, I'm sorry, a um, peppermint shrimp. He was swimming around the tank with a peppermint shrimp in his mouth, not knowing exactly what to do with it. And because I like clean shrimp and things, and this is gonna be a more community reef tank, then he just, I didn't want to take the chance of reintroducing him to the tank. So, reintroducing him to the tank. There we go, I can say it. So, um, he is going to just be traded in the local fish store uh, for store credit. Doesn't hold any sentimental value to me. I did like him in the aquarium. I liked how he perched on rocks and looked around. Um, but with the direction I want to go with restocking this tank, um, was not going to be a fish I wanted to put back in. So there you have it. This is the conclusion of the Marine Velvet Outbreak Part 2, the reintroduction. So Part 3 is going to be coming up here in probably about a month. Um, I'm still working out the details of what I want this tank to look like when it's completely stocked which means if I'm going to only introduce one or two fish a month, which is my plan, I'm going to um, need to be very diligent about what I'm looking for, the order that I need to put them in, obviously most docile to probably the most aggressive, so that means any tangs I'm going to put in the tank are going to get put in last. Um, and I have kind of a unique way that I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm not ready to share that yet, but that's going to be part three. So um, look for that in about a month. In the meantime, I'm going to be posting a lot of other videos. Um, and if you happen to see me in this shirt or other shirts that I've worn in other videos, it's because um, I have the day off today. I'm not sure when I'm going to have my next day off. So I'm doing a lot of the shooting of the videos today, and then I'm going to edit them and post them um, 
you know, every couple days to every week so that there's, uh, you know, not a big bunch of them at once. So, anyway, I'm really happy that the fish are doing well. Um, and it's nice to see movement in this tank again other than coral. So, uh, like I said, I'm really excited. Uh, we made it through the whole um, fallow period, um, the whole nine weeks, and everything is doing great. Uh, very excited about that and uh, can't wait to see what the future holds. So hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you uh, here real soon. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you like what I'm doing, it's a little bit different than some other reefers out there. And uh, just to kind of give you a heads up on what's coming in the future, we have um, some how-to videos. So as I set up the quarantine tank as more of a permanent solution instead of an emergency solution, um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the aquascaping in that tank. And I'm also going to show you, um, I'm going to do some improvements to this tank and I'm going to kind of go through with you those improvements as well. So uh, hope you enjoy these videos and I will talk to you soon.